Hey there folks, this is Goonie XI, welcoming you right back to Let's Play Higurashi, this is episode 93, there we go, got it right this time. <laughs> um, in the last episode, well there was a bonus episode with the music, but before that, in 92, uh, Satoshi and Shion had this whole uh, baseball-y event going on. <laughs> baseball -y event, I'm so sporty. <laughs> and um, Ivia and Shion had this conversation where they were a bit concerned about Satoshi and Sadako and... Yeah, that was about it, really. Now we're going to carry on with Chapter 4 and see how it carries on. The rainy season was just around the corner, and the air had become so humid that my shirt stuck to my skin. It had been a few weeks since Satoshi couldn't stop showing up for baseball practice. Oh no. That was what made him happy again. I looked for him as soon as I arrived at the field. He's not here yet. Did I get here too early? I want to see him playing in the field right when I get here. It started arriving late because of those feelings. However, he wasn't here today either. I didn't even bother hiding my disappointment anymore. Everybody knew by now how I felt. The team members from Mion's class came over to try and console me, but I shooed them away. What's going on, Sanzaki-san? You feeling sick? Even Iria couldn't comfort me. I was aware that he too knew why I was like this. I'm going home. I don't feel like watching the practice today. Look, we're having a meeting with the Okunomaya Titans later. I wanted you to be there, because you're our manager. Don't treat me like a manager. I never agreed to be one. Iria looked down, not knowing what to say. Alright. Please help us again when you feel like it. Maybe I won't come... Maybe I won't be coming back. If you really need a manager, look for somebody else. Please do come again. Whenever you feel like it. Satoshi-kun will be sad if you're not here when he comes back. I ignored him and turned around. I'd already set up my schedule with Mion, so I didn't have to ask her every time anymore. I tried to contact her a couple of times to ask her if Satoshi-kun was, was doing in school, but I haven't been able to get through to her. Apparently, the hag had sensed that I might be in contact with Sis. In other words, Sis was being watched. As a result, it hasn't been easy to contact her. Things are getting a bit worse. Kasai, who had been helping me contact her, seemed to also have been marked. People knew he was loyal to me. I hadn't seen him for a while either. All I could do was wonder how Satoshi-kun was doing. I was frustrated, because there was no way for me to know. My head was filled with worries. But something surprised me out of the blue. Somebody called out to me when I was about to leave the field on my bike. Oh, Rena, I haven't seen you then in this arc yet. Michan, hello. i never seen this girl before. Luckily she called me Michan. It's only one person who refers to me on that way, as far as I know. Rena, I'm surprised to see you here. Okay, I'm back. Her name is Rena Ryugu. Yeah, she's called uh, Rena, but it's called her Rena and Rena by the Ah, okay. Her real name is Rena, but she wants to be called Rena. So that's what we call her. I might be mispronouncing both of them, making it so confusing. <laughs> she moved here in April. I had some information on her, but it was all ambiguous. Sis was still a bit uncertain about her, since she's so new. It was hard for me to handle someone like that. I didn't know how to act around her, as Mion. So I decided to pretend to be in an obvious, sulky mood. That way, she wouldn't talk to me as much, assuming that Mion was simply feeling bad. Well, that's what I really am anyway. You going home, Micha? Yeah. I'm not feeling well. Sorry. Let's go together then. I wanted to say that I'd rather be alone. There's only one road to Hinamazawa. So, asking to be alone would look odd. The only way to not seem suspicious would be to walk home with her. Yeah, let's go. Then I quietly nodded. I unlocked my bike. Michan, do you have an umbrella? Nope. It might rain soon. So let's hurry a bit, since you don't have one. Yeah, they won't have to talk as much if they're hurrying, right? As you predicted, we were attacked by pouring rain on our way. We ended up taking shelter in a small shack in front of a bus stop. It's pouring, but it doesn't look like it's going to last long, since the sky over there is clear. Yeah. I heard the sound of rain pattering on the rooftop and the raindrops jumping into puddles. Whenever I think of bus stops and rain on them now, I think of, oh, what was the name of that anime? 
Watamote, or Watamote, Watamote, <laughs> where she's uh, watching these other two students and she didn't have an umbrella and stuff. And it's just a nice anime in general. Quite funny. <laughs> it sounded loud, but it made me feel strangely calm. I zoned out for a moment, then Venna talked to me while looking up at the rainy sky. I was worried about you, because you looked so down. All the baseball team members knew I was depressed because I hadn't seen Satoshi-kun recently. Most of them attended school in Hinamazawa, so it wasn't surprising that she knew as well. I hadn't been able to contact Sis these past few weeks, but I was sure she had an idea of how I felt about Satoshi-kun and how I would feel if he didn't come to his baseball practice. Sis was probably pretending to act a little depressed during her day-to-day -day in Hinamazawa to avoid creating a big gap between our moods. But neither of us knew the details about the other right now, so she wouldn't be able to answer if others asked her what was wrong. She'd only be able to say, leave me alone. That might lead more people to become worried. Rena must have thought Mion was depressed. That must be why she came all the way to see me. She must have known what was going on because she knew that I was at the baseball field. She feel lonely because Satoshi-kun is avoiding us. That's exactly what it is. Having deduced what had been going on with Satoshi-kun from what she just said. He'd been distancing himself from others lately because of exhaustion. That's what it sounded like, at least. He looked like he was very worried about Sadako-chan. I think he's really on edge. I feel bad for him. He really cares about his sister. He has a lot of courage. What I'd said sounded hollow, as I knew too well how much of a burden Sadako had become. But I think he'd feel even worse if he also looked that depressed, I think. I don't want that. I know, but if you really don't, then you need to smile for him, otherwise he might really feel cornered. I know you're strong. You can smile, even if it's just pretend. So I want you to smile, no matter what. You know that lies can become true sometimes. What she was saying in a nutshell was this. Both Satoshi-kun and Satko were totally wiped out. If Mion were also depressed, even though she's the sort of person who usually lightens the mood, the situation would be stuck in a vicious cycle. Rena sounded more like she was trying to give me advice than trying to console me. She must be more mature than she looks. Sis told me that she was a funny girl with a few bad habits. But she seemed to have another very mature side to her. That seems to be all that Shion seeing. Do you love Satoshi-kun? Yeah. Though I shouldn't have told her that. I immediately responded. In that case, why don't you smile? Rena smiled herself. I believe Satoshi-kun will feel better if he sees you smile. I know you feel powerless now, but your smile will give him strength. I know what you're saying, but it's not that easy. Rena giggled and nodded. He'll come back after he's done with his part-time job. His part-time job? I must ask that question, but I managed to stop myself. Yeah, it was in a tip, wasn't it, where it said that Satoshi was in a grocery or something? A grocer's? From the tone of Rena's voice, it sounded like it was something everyone knew. His part-time job, huh? I wonder when it'll end. Until he has enough money, I guess. But he'll finish by Sadako-chan's birthday at the latest. Oh yeah, he got a part-time job to get Sadako uh, um, a stuffed doll or something, didn't he? A toy. I tried to figure out what was going on from what she said. I had to listen very carefully to uncover the whole picture. Satoshi-kun seemed to be working in order to make some money. I don't think it's easy to find a job when you're still in school. Sis might have had something to do with it. His job only seemed temporary. And it seemed to have something to do with Satko's birthday. It wasn't that difficult to figure out. Satoshi was working and saving up to buy his little sister something expensive for her birthday. He was trying to comfort her even though he was so torn up himself. Sadako again. Satoshi-kun was already worn out because of her, and he was now working for her sake, even though he was exhausted. How stupid. It would be easier for him to just forget about Sadako. Oh, bullshit. She's off. The first we've seen of this nuttiness. Tsk. I was startled when I realised Rena was looking straight into my eyes. She was smiling, but her eyes looked creepy. I never voiced what I was thinking. But she was looking at me as though she figured out that I was blaming Sadako. She beamed when she noticed my fear. She smiled as though she understood that I thought that way because of love. 
She was giving me the creeps. I could hear thunder roar in the distance. I love the sounds going with it, all the rain and the thunder. You know. The rain began to pick up. Do you feel jealous of Satko Cham because she monopolises Satoshi Kun? That's exactly it. I avoided answering immediately this time. But Renna seemed to know what I was thinking already. <laughs> I wouldn't be upset even if he did. That's just how it is when you're in love. Thanks. Back to normal now. You've been encouraging Satko Chan to spite that. That's admirable. Of course I have. She's my friend. I sounded so fake. I felt like spitting on the floor. All we can do is encourage Satko Chan and Satoshi Kun. I don't know how to save them from this situation. Satko is relying on Satoshi Kun way too much. If she was stronger, he wouldn't have to suffer in her place. <laughs> you sound really straightforward. Renna nodded with an unflinched smile, even though my remarks could be taken as harsh. What was this mysterious girl thinking? It was difficult to get a read on her. Maybe Satoshi Kun feels that way a little too. Mm -hmm. I kept smiling, but her smile looked strangely cold. I think he's tired of protecting Satoko Chan, and he's aware of that. Given the type of person Rena is, I don't think she'd say something if she wasn't certain of it. Because of that, she must have been confident in what she just told me. Why do you think that? He said so. What? Satoshi Kun secretly confessed to her. Rena asked me to keep it that way. Satoshi Kun told me that he felt tired of protecting Satko chan. He was feeling guilty though. I don't think he would say something like that. But however, it was unlikely that Rena was lying. I just met her, so I didn't know what made me feel that way. But my hunch told me that she was telling the truth. I heaved a huge sigh. Satoshi Kun must have gotten so tired that he couldn't help telling someone. Even so, even if he thought that way, he wouldn't tell somebody so easily. Maybe Rena led him to do so. She might be capable of something like that. I love this song. <laughs> I don't understand this girl. It's like Yoshi's Island or something? Some, some, something like that? It had only been a little while since we'd met, but I'd already started talking about something I was keeping deep inside of me. Does she have some kind of supernatural power to reach into people's minds and drag out what they're thinking? It suddenly hit me that I was sitting with this creepy girl in a tiny shack. I've been dragged into a strange world. I don't think Sis has realised Rena's real personality. She thinks Rena's just a funny girl with some strange habits. She would have told me if she knew. I guess Satoshi Kun must trust you a lot if she can if he confessed that to you. I'm a little jealous. It's not because he trusts me. I think it's because I've experienced the same thing. You what? Did you also have to cover for your siblings once? Those footsteps always followed me. They even came to my bedside and looked down at me. Huh? Sorry, Rana. What are you talking about? I turned around to face her. I got the chills. Though she was smiling. Her eyes looked ice cold. I trembled and froze with my eyes open. Have you experienced anything like that? I guess not. Probably. Then I kept laughing self-derisively. I tried to figure out what she was saying. Have you ever thought of leaving Hinamazawa and moving to a big city? Have you ever thought of doing something like that? I didn't know how to respond. Then I waited for my answer, urging me to speak with her silence. No. No. I love it here. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? I knew that. It didn't seem like a good idea to lie to her. Ren has some kind of power I can't grasp. She can read people's minds just by seeing the slightest change in their expressions. So I had to tell her the truth. You'll be okay, if that's true. Oyashiro-sama won't get mad at you. Oyashiro-sama? Oyashiro-sama. That's him as I was guardian deity. I couldn't understand why she mentioned that name. My mind stopped for a moment. That's right. Oyashiro Sama. She calmly repeated the name as if trying to teach me something. Yeah. I remember. Oyashiro Sama never allows heathens to desecrate Hinamazawa. Oyashiro Sama never allows the villagers to leave either. Those are the rules. Slowly. I recalled the fear of the curse which supposedly caused the dismemberment, murder, and the death of the Hojo couple. Excuse me. When I was sent to the institution, I had this fear. 
I was scared that if I went to that faraway boarding school, I'd fall under the curse. But I should be okay. I escaped from the school and returned to my hometown, Tokunamaya, to be precise. But it should be okay according to the kids' rules, because I love Hinamazawa. The hag forces me to live this suffocating life, but I still chose to stay in this place. I don't believe I'm breaking Oishiro-sama's rules. Even though the Sonzaki family has selfishly banished me to a remote place, I came back here anyway. Oishiro-sama should even bless me for that. I guess I'm trying to convince myself that the curse doesn't apply to me. But, I think I'm still afraid of it. I love this place, so I don't think I qualify for Oishiro-sama's curse. You could even call me a model villager. Yes, I think so too, but I'm not sure about Satoshi-kun. Why? Satoshi-kun wants to leave Hinamazawa and run far away, even if only unconsciously. Eh? Uh -huh. I gave an inaudible cry. While I was feeling sad that Satoshi-kun hadn't shown up for practice, he still lived in Hinamazawa, so I'd never even considered the thought of him going away. Are you saying that he wants to skip town? Yes. He's not aware of it himself, though. He probably didn't notice it until Oyashiro-sama stood by his bed. I still had no idea what she was talking about. I continued trying to figure out what she was saying. Everything he's going through is a sign of Oyashiro-sama's curse. You feel like someone's watching you from a distance, and it follows you, then it watches from right behind you. After that, you start hearing an extra footstep. It only happens outside at first, but you start hearing it even inside your house after a while. Then, Oishiro-sama keeps watching you, even when you're sleeping in the dark. Right by his side, waiting silently, for you to admit your sin. Satoshi-kun told me he was having nightmares at first. So, I asked him what kind of dreams he was having. And those dreams he was having, as it turned out, were just like mine. I warned him that the presence would become bigger. He'd hear an extra footstep and feel the presence watching him in his sleep. I told him to come to me if that ever happened. He must have been suspicious at first. But just as I predicted, he started to feel Oyashiro-sama's presence more strongly. He finally realised he could talk to me about it. Then it didn't look like she was joking. She just calmly told me what had been going on. I couldn't even move. I couldn't tell her if her words were a joke or the truth. I could only feel stunned. I'm from Hinamazawa originally, but I moved to Ibaraki Prefecture right before I went to elementary school. However, when I couldn't adjust to my new environment, Oishiro-sama frequently started telling me to return to Hinmazawa in my head. But I couldn't do anything since I was just a little kid. I was forced to live there, though I felt threatened by Oishiro-sama's curse. Then... Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, bless me. Then I paused. It looked like she didn't want to go into the details of what followed. In general, she confused me even more. Anyway, I was able to come back here in the end. Oishiro-sama forgave me. I haven't felt his presence anymore since then. Satoshi-kun has been subjected to the curse even though he's in Hinamazawa. Why? There can only be one reason. It's because he wishes to abandon Hinamazawa. Oishiro-sama won't allow that. After a series of inner monologues, he confessed. You know he's working part-time, don't you? The teddy bear he's getting for Sadako-chan costs about 100,000 yen and he's trying to get the money by her birthday. Have you noticed it yet? Think about it like this. If he had that amount of money, that'd be enough for him to run away some somewhere far from here. He unconsciously started to think about that, about leaving Sadako-chan behind. But he'd feel very guilty. As he pointed out, Sadako-chan's a burden on him. He's not stupid, so he's aware of that. He just doesn't want to admit it, because he's the, he's the one who's supposed to protect his little sister. He's been struggling with himself. He thinks he's working to please Sadako-chan on her birthday. But he also feels that he might be deceiving himself because he unconsciously wants to skip town with that money. I don't think he should run away. Even if he did, he'd regret it for the rest of his life. Oishiro-sama knows that. That's why Oishiro-sama is trying to warn him. I hope Satoshi-kun stops thinking of abandoning Sadako-chan. He's working hard to make it Sadako-chan's birthday, which is a couple of days after the Watanagashi festival. He's pushing himself too hard. He believes it'll end when Satoko-chan's birthday comes. The curse keeps cautioning him while he tries to figure out whether he should leave or continue protecting her. The torrential rain didn't seem to want to stop. It kept pouring down on the galvanised iron roof, producing a loud noise. Yet in the shack, it fell completely silent. What the hell was Rena talking about? 
I couldn't grasp even half of what she was saying. The only thing I'd figured out is that Satoshi Kun was struggling, confused, and in lots of pain. He's suffering from Oyoshiro Sama's curse? Had Venus experienced that before? The Watanagashi Festival was right around the corner. Oyoshiro Sama's curse had struck three years in a row. There's no guarantee that it wouldn't strike a fourth time. Satoshi Kun was subject to Oyoshiro Sama's curse even now. Was he going to skip town? Was he going to be the next victim of Oyoshiro Sama's curse? Either way, he might disappear forever. Could I do something to prevent it? If I didn't do anything, it would all come to a hopeless end. End? I started feeling a sense of dread. I didn't buy the crazy story Rana told me. But if something really was happening to Satoshi Kun, which might bring about some kind of an end, I couldn't help feeling scared. It's true, isn't it? My instinct is always correct. I decided to contact Mion despite the danger. Mion got upset at first, but she had to listen to me. Oh, he's jumping right to it. <laughs> Sis, what's going on? With Satoshi-kun. He looks really stressed out. I can't even talk to him. What do you mean? You don't know what's going on because you can't talk to him? Sorry. Sis, give me another chance to trade spots again. That's fine. But I'm kind of busy lately attending meetings for the festival. What do you plan to do? Another part-time job? I'm going to your school. Oh, but what's she going to do there? <laughs> oh, I think I know what part's coming up and it's a corker. Whether it'll happen in the next chapter part, I don't know, but I'm guessing so. Ooh, two tips this time. Come on then, let's have a look. Possessed. <laughs> is that referring to uh, Rena? But there then? Is it referring to Satoshi? Probably Satoshi. Because he's having the footsteps and all that. Or is it something else? <laughs> let's check out the tips. Notebook page 21. Why don't I relate my encounter with that creepy girl in the rain? It's definitely she on writing this. Her name is Rena Ryugu. Her real first name is Rena. I have no idea what kind of girl she really is. One thing's certain, she has no relation to the Sonzaki family. She has no relation to the three families as a whole either. The Ryugu family used to live in Hinamazawa, but then they moved to Ibaraki. That was before she went to elementary school. They returned to Hinamazawa some years later. The way it's changing pages, you know, notebook, and it's on all on one page in the notebook. Weird. Mm. Contradiction. Rena Ryugu said she came back because Ayushiro Sama told her to. I don't know what that means. She said it was the curse of Ayushiro Sama. That Ayushiro Sama had stalked her. I think that was probably a hallucination, but Satoshi Kun had been interested in that experience. She said that Satoshi Kun was also experiencing Ayushiro Sama's curse. Satoshi Gun told her that he was being followed by some unknown existence. He was surprised to learn that Rena had the same experience before. What's a, what is Oyashiro Sama's curse? Why did Rena and Satoshi Gun have a similar experience? I believe that means that somebody put them under surveillance. Somebody must be spying on the next victim of the curse. Since Rena and Satoshi Gun both blindly believed in Oyashiro Sama's curse, they interpreted it as Oyashiro Sama's presence. If paranoia kicked in, it feels as if they were experiencing paranormal phenomena. phenomena. <laughs> Judging from what, Ren from what Rena said, it seems that Satoshi-kun had been put on surveillance since long before Watanagashi. So, one question comes to mind. Why were they watching Rena? I'm assuming that this surveillance was placed on a victim-to-be of that year. If so, I don't understand why Rena went through it. Why did they watch her, even though she was living so far away? If she was considered somebody who abandoned the village, I could understand. But she didn't fall victim in the end. Maybe she was forgiven because she came back to Hinamazawa. I guess she still knows something I don't. Oh, Ren is so suspicious. We only just met her in this arc too. Pitch 24 Satoshi Gun looked terrible. When he went home, he had, he had to mediate a fight between Satko and their aunt. He became mentally exhausted. He went to work every day. Became physically exhausted, no longer communicated with his classmates, he's either slept on his desk or has gone somewhere during lunch break. Used to be really gentle, it was painful to see him suffering like that. On top of all that, he was dealing with the curse of Oyashiro Sama. He must have been completely, totally and absolutely exhausted. 
That curse was a form of surveillance by those planned to victimize Satoshi Kun that year. That means that the other victim was in the same situation. Satoshi Kun's aunt had also been watched. Did she notice any presence? What about the others? Did the victims of the previous instance also experience it? I need to investigate the facts in order to prove the curse on Satoshi Kun was actually just surveillance. Is it surveillance? Paranoia? Or really the curse? Well, I guess we'll find out sometime. <laughs> Anyways, that's chapter 4 done. Uh, this has been Greeny XI. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in a bit when we start off chapter 5. See why Xion wants to go to their school. <laughs> I hope the next part is what I'm thinking of. If it is, things are about to get really dark. I know things have started to flicker a bit with darkness. With Rena going a bit nut nutty there and... Uh, Satoshi being trapped, but we'll see. Let's get fortune, folks. See you again in a bit.